or an image or an image. Not only image, but more context you want to see. Is it Lali's on the effect of estrogen? Reducing the situation of that. interested in studying or may study with the help of your marrow. So now let us move, move ahead with uh, uh, the next part of the thing, that is the fertilization. Now when we are talking about the fertilization, so this is the, I hope the diagram is visible, this is from your guide. okay. Now if you see we have discussed uh, the parts with the, where the sperm was entering, we have already discussed about most of the reactions when we were discussing in the previous system. So as you can see in this diagram, this very first diagram is the one which showing the ovulated, the ova which has been expelled after the ovulation. So this is uh, this corona radiator, these are the spine cells, the layer of cells which are attached because ova as such is not ovulated without any attachment. It is still surrounded by an adjoining layer of cell which is the corona radiator. And then you can see in the second diagram, the part that is part B of the diagram, it is showing that uh, number of sperms are coming as we have already discussed that uh, numerous sperms come and they uh, reach the uh, ova, but out of that only one is able to uh, cause the fertilization and the rest they are just disappearing. We have discussed that. What was the reaction which we have discussed? Acrosomal reactions. 
question and what prevents the entry of the further other cause? Yes. Okay, so this we have already discussed in detail. So according to the same reaction that the normal reaction we have, we have there only one will take the entry, and as you can see, only one cause will occur inside. And then uh, at the rest, this integrate. So uh, so what is now part B of this uh, diagram? If you see. Uh, the next part goes in the formation of a pronucleus both for the male and the female. And thereafter, uh, in the E part of the diagram, we will just see that now the next stage goes on to the stage of further division. Okay, the X and the Y or the X or the S chromosome they have now come and paired up, which you are aware and we started in the very initial classes that how the uh, the and the uh, sex of the uh, fetus would be decided. So this uh, is the first initial step where now the competition has taken place and the fertilization has taken place. Okay, before I move. Okay. So when the fertilization has taken place, so if you can see again this diagram is from your textbook of uh, guidance. And uh, if you see over here, so this is again uh, saying the same thing that after ovulation that is entering into the fallopian tube and the, if the fertilization is happening at the level of the fallopian tube itself and you can see that they mentioned as day one of the fertilization that is the start of it. Now thereafter you see uh, the, this fertilized over this is now this is now forming this is now going up uh, it is just moving ahead and that movement is actually uh, held by the secretory, the secretions within the fallopian tube, the movement of the uh, mucus inside, as well as the, there is the presence of ciliated epithelium, which is helping in the uh, movement of this cyborg now above and from here, from this end, finally to its place where it will finally get inside. Okay? Now, initially, if you see that this part, that is the isthmus part of this. Uh, the low grade group that uh, remains a little constricted uh, and it takes some time for it to relax. So, uh, and this relaxation occurs again under the influence of the progesterone which is being released from the first group, right? So, this is another effect of the progesterone which is helping in the relaxation of the isthmus and because of this, uh, the cellular can move further ahead. So this takes a few, uh, some time, so maybe one to two days that is lost from here and it takes the time from here to reach to this place and simultaneously if you see, now the cells, uh, there is a division of the cells also occurring inside and you can see from here, uh, here now you, there are two cells, then becoming four and uh, eight and so on like this. So finally till the time it reaches actually the uh, uterine uh, and the uterus and going to the reach uh, its place of implantation, this cavity takes around uh, some total about some 5 to 7 days in total. So, 5 to 7 days will be implanting. So, uh, this reaching to is around some 4 to 5 days. So, and by the time it implants, implantation is actually going and just attaching to the endometrial wall. So, that take, so that is happening at the 5 to 7 day from the day of the fertilization. Uh, so, you will see. Uh, once it reaches this stage, that is the implantation stage, that is the stage is known as the uh, blastocyst, and it is around some 100 cell stage. Okay. Now, uh, what is happening? Now, this implantation is an important process and it decides the fate, uh, the further the fate of this, uh, uh, what you call that, of the coming on the growing fetus later on. So implantation is important for the further growth of the fetus. Otherwise, if not implanted, then the next phase will just the uh, ego uh, and it. So now the process of implantation of this part, you can see over here. Let us show that this uh, blastocyst is going and getting attached to the uh, endometrial wall. Now this uh, attachment is not that just going and getting attached, attached as such, but it needs certain uh, certain steps are there. So what are those certain steps? The first step is that of the attachment over here as you can see. And after attachment, not only it will remain attached, it will try to go and penetrate inside a little bit into that wall. Okay? Now, so these steps are, so first the moment it is going and getting attached to 
the endometrial wall the vascularity of the part into which it is going to attach that increases the permeability of the vessels increases and of course there are new vessels also forming so it is allowing or helping in the receiving of this vascularity once attached it now has to penetrate it has to actually lyse the cells around so which are the cells that is the endometrial cells around so you can see over here it is just trying to the proteolytic enzymes these are being released by these trophoblastic cells and so uh, which are trying to invade and they will just lyse the the cells of the endometrial uh, wall and it will try to enter deeper inside So once it goes deeper and gets strongly attached, now goes the stage of the you say that is the stage of the implantation. So it involves two steps: attachment followed by invasion. Is that clear? So this is the stage, and you can see the the moment it is getting attached. Sometimes some females they have that is uh, presented as uh, bleeding. A little bit bleeding is there, which is known as by the name of implantation bleeding as well. But not in all pregnant women uh, face this uh, implantation bleeding. Some of the patients, uh, uh, some of the patients, they uh, do have implantation. Okay. Now during this phase, if you see the trophoblast is going and getting attached over there, so the adjoining cells, that is the vesicular cells of the endometria, they are going to provide. They are going to receive and they are going to actually provide nutrition to these cells for some time. And before it is attached, the secretions of the uterine wall, which is also known as the uterine milk, that is providing the secretion, the nutrition to the cells before before implantation. Once implanted, the adjoining vesicular cells they are going to provide the nutrition to the cells. Okay. So now, now once the stage, stage, the step. of implantation is over so you can see this further see so this is the one where it is now going and this is finally getting attached as well as now it is embedded this trophoblast it can be further divided into two types of the trophoblast that are the sexual trophoblast and the cytoplasmic trophoblast sexual trophoblast you can see in this diagram this is multi nucleated structure okay if you just see the number of Dots showing the types of the nuclei, and uh, which shown by this purple thing, and the cytotrophoblast. These are distinct individual cells having single nucleus. These are the cytotrophoblast. These ones, and this purple one. This is showing multi-nucleated, more of a gel-like substance, a one single mass which is entering in there, and they are releasing those proteolytic enzymes which are the structure. So. Uh, the trophoblast can be divided into two parts: sensory and the cytotrophoblast. And you have definitely the adjoining uh, residual cells, which are going to provide the nutrition that I was talking about. And finally, this step of the implantation is complete. Now, when we are talking about the nutrition, how does the nutrition is provided to this? Growing, uh, I mean, uh, fetus. You just can see the initial part is trophoblastic nutrition. That is the nutrition which is provided by the vesicular part, the vesicular region. Okay, and later on the diffusion is happening through the placenta. Till the time of implantation, there is no development of placenta yet has taken place. It has yet not started. It has just gone well, attached to that endometrial uh, wall and just penetrated. So now only the neighboring cells are there which is going to provide the nutrition and the progesterone level is being maintained by the corpus luteum which i had already talked about okay so that is important because the placenta has yet not developed it has yet not started it is going to start and take over so it needs the time for two to three months as i already told you so corpus luteum is uh, required to release the progesterone which maintains the further pregnancy in case if the corpus luteum Function is affected and it is not producing uh, the required amount of the hormone progesterone. 
then uh, there are chances that the further development of the fetus will be affected and the fetus uh, can, that can lead to the abortion as well. But important thing is that uh, there are, therefore, if you, if you have seen anybody in your family, uh, sometimes supplementary doses of the progesterone is given during that time in case the hormonal levels of the progesterone is lower than those just to support, give an additional support by the time placenta is fully formed and fills over the function of the formation of progesterone. Is that clear? So this is quite important. Now the question arises, the fetus, it is again a foreign body for the female. How does this not reject the fetus, whereas if there is uh, any ground transplantation done, the body tries to reject it. Yes, that is the placenta barrier. What does placenta have in itself which is preventing it further to reject this, reject the fetus? Yes, please. Placenta barrier is okay, but placenta is okay, but it is a good barrier. Yes? 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 What else? It is good for that also. What else is the reason? Yes? Tight junctions, is it? Okay. What else? Any any other thing you might think of? Yes, please. Beta cells never in the beta cells of it is rather anti so you are trying to match up with the RHM compatibility condition. Let us go on to this. So actually there is no expression of MHC class 1 or 2 proteins on this uh, placenta at all. Okay, you all have been taught about the major histone compatibility complex and the genes. Okay, so there is no expression of these two over there onto the placenta. So as a result, if there is no expression, there is no chance of formation of. No one take photograph, I have just taken these lines from your genome. Okay, what else I teach? I try to stick to your textbooks so that you go back and can refer back the same. Okay? Just try to understand these are not at all expressed here, so there is no question of uh, formation of the chances of rejection. Okay? What is expressed in turn is the HLA G and the HLA C and LC. So that is not going to cause any antibodies against the fetus and hence it is not rejecting the fetus as it does in any other drug. Okay? Now further what is there is, there is expression of a fast ligand. Fast, uh, I hope you have studied in your blood group, you thought F small f, fast ligand. When you are talking, have you have been taught about it, you must have read about it. These are actually the ligands which are expressed onto the cell surfaces and over here it will be expressed onto the placenta. The cytotoxic T cells, they act, they are going to act against it and this this protein. Okay, so this is another mechanism in case if any of the T cells happen to try to go and act against it, so these fast ligands are just going to dissolve it. Okay? So these are expressed, for the, they are expressed against the cytotoxic cells as well as the natural chemicals. Okay? So these are present. So therefore there are two mechanisms which would prevent any kind of rejection of the fetus and uh, any further uh, reactions as you, as you have studied in the, in your blood. And this is the system when blood is taught. Now, another, now let us move on to, we have now discussed the blastocysts have gone and have got implanted. Now further step is that the placenta has to develop, so as to support the further development and the progression of the fetus. 
So now this figure shows the fetus inside and if you can see through it, this is the placenta and the cord which is actually attaching and joining the fetus with the mother and you can see uh, now again this diagram is from your writer and this is showing the placental uh, the, uh, the total the formation of the arrangement of the vessels around in the in this placenta. So you can see this part is the maternal part, maternal end. Maternal end means, and this is the maternal end, and this is the fetal end. You understand it? You could get it. One, the one which is joining towards the fetal is the fetal end I am talking about, and the one which is facing towards the uh, uterine wall, the endometrial wall, that is the maternal end I am talking about. So if you see over here, so again you have this arrangement of the blood vessels through which as you are aware that any of the diffusion or uh, it's going to take place. Now if I talk about the fetal end, so you can you can see that the cord is comprises of the umbilical vein and the arteries. So if you see over here, this uh, umbilical vein is shown with the red. The single umbilical vein with two umbilical arteries which is shown by the blue one and you, I hope you know that the deoxygenated blood is brought through the umbilical artery and the united one is carried back from the placenta towards the fetus through the umbilical Okay. So and uh, this is the maternal end and you can see over here these are the maternal vessels they have shown these ones which is towards the blood. Now you see the maternal vessels and the maternal, the red one showing the oxygenated blood. This is coming and finally forming certain sinusoids are formed over here. And these floral patterns, if you can see, which is formed by these umbilical vessels over here, these are the billet. Uh, I don't know whether you've been taught in your embryology about this. Yes, you've been taught, so you have again a better knowledge about it. So you can see the sinusoids are over here. And if you see carefully, so these maternal vessels, there is an uh, outlet I mean, which is finally getting into this sinusoid and uh, the fetal ones and this, this is a space for where can the diffusion can take place and it will be, uh, uh, and the fetal uh, vessels can uh, either take in or release the different substances from this uh, diffusion across the fetal vessels and the, the umbilical vessels and the villi. Okay? Is that clear? Yes or no? Because we have been already taught in your embryology, so I expect more of the anatomical detailed knowledge from you. Am I clear with this? Yes. yes? So now, uh, okay, the, this is the section which is shown with the fetal capillaries and the villus space. Now, what is happening if I just say, the diffusion of the gases are taking place across this membrane. So if I say which all gases are required by the fetus? Which, which, which gases? Oxygen, primarily. Then it has to give out what? Carbon dioxide. What else is needed to be exchanged? Waste products. What else? Nucleus, okay, so all is happening through this placenta present only. Now, if I have to talk about the intake of oxygen uh, by the fetus from the maternal blood, how is this possible? How is this generally possible? The law of diffusion state? What? The movement will always occur from this region of high concentration to? So there has to be a gradient. The concentration gradient has to be there. So if you see, the partial pressures of oxygen in the maternal blood and that with that of uh, this uh, fetal blood, so there is definitely a difference. And the difference is that the maternal PO2, maternal blood PO2 at the level of the placenta is around 50 ml. Okay? Whereas the fetal blood uh, this, uh, uh, is around that 30, PO2 levels is at 30 ml. So there is a difference of 20 mm Hg, always the gradient of 20 mm Hg is always present. So you can think of the fetus is always in a state of hypoxia. Can you see, can you understand that? Yes or no? 
क्या होता है पीओ टू में क्या होता है बताओ कैसे हिमोग्लोबिन से तो बाइंड हो गए और वॉट एल्स नहीं पता कैसे बाइंड होता है नहीं पता लेट जाओ नेक्स्ट और आपके से जो बगल वाला है अगर उसे सो रहा है तो उसे उठा दीजिए आप जरा आगे वहां पे आ जाइए जल्दी आओ जल्दी आओ बेटा 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 इनको जगह तो निकालने के लिए आगे आओ नेक्स्ट पर्सन मतलब ना तो तुम लोग ये सिस्टम पढ़ रहे हो ना पुराना सिस्टम पढ़ रहे हो क्या पढ़ रहे हो कुछ नहीं पढ़ रहे लोअर पीएच क्या करेगा नेक्स्ट क्या होगा बताओ फिर फिर क्या होगा बढ़ जाता है तो फिर नहीं धीरे धीरे बोलो लोअर पीएच हुआ फिर क्या हुआ पढ़ गया ओके 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 आप Your 
it is going to cause the exchange. It is needed for the exchange of the oxygen and of course with the carbon dioxide. Now, when the carbon dioxide levels are higher, so what is going to happen is that it is favor uh, the hemoglobin, the binding of uh, oxygen with the hemoglobin is much favored in the presence of more of the carbon dioxide. Okay, so that helps in the easy transportation or the exchange at the level of the lungs. Now let us understand this, how the same force effect is applicable at the level of this placenta when we are talking about. I have just told you about, I have just shown you this, uh, okay, fine, this effect where the, the exchange or the diffusion is taking place at the level of the sinusoid, okay. Now, if you see, the fetus, uh, in the umbilical, this is uh, the umbilical arteries which are carrying the deoxygenated blood from the fetus to that uh, near the sinusoid. And the maternal blood in turn has, at that particular point of time, has a higher level of the uh, this uh, oxygen in, in sinusoid. Now, due to the presence of this higher uh, or the de uh, carbon dioxide in this PCO2 level is higher in the deoxygenated blood, it is going to favor the uh, dissociation and more of the exchange of this carbon dioxide would be lost to the maternal blood and the binding of the oxygen with the hemoglobin, the fetal hemoglobin would be enhanced. Okay, so this is happening and hence that is carried back again and this is helping in the uh, exchange. So this is the force effect which is happening at the level of the fetal vessels. Now what is happening at the level of the maternal blood? Now maternal blood which was initially carrying more of the oxygen and lesser amount of the carbon dioxide after this exchange is taking place and now getting enriched with more of the carbon dioxide from the fetal blood, fetal exchange, okay? And now it is losing more of the oxygen to the fetal blood, okay? And this is causing now the maternal blood after the exchange becomes, have, has more of the PCO2 levels as in comparison to the pure so there are two kinds of forces which are happening over here. One favoring the uh, exchange of oxygen from the maternal blood to the fetal blood, and the other one favoring the uh, exchange of carbon dioxide from the fetal blood to the maternal blood. So if you see in the graph, you have two graphs shown in the one which uh, just projected. This one. So if you see in the same graph where this, this graph has been taught uh, to you in your respiratory classes. So you have the PO2 levels and the oxygen saturation over here, as so you can see. So this blue line shows, the blue graph shows the maternal uh, uh, blood changes and uh, this one showing the, the red one showing the fetal blood changes. So if you see the fetal, the, the graph for the fetus, that has shifted more towards the left side and the graph of the maternal blood, this one has shown, shifted more towards the right side. So then right and left. So all of you have been taught about the right shift and the left shift. Left shift favors what? More binding. And right shift favors what? Dissociation. So it is happening a double bore effect is happening at this particular place. Okay? So you want to understand double bore effect, one happening towards the fetal, favoring the uh, binding of the oxygen to the fetal blood, and the other one is release of more of the dissociation of more of the oxygen from the maternal blood. Is that clear? So a right shift and a left shift happening simultaneously which favors the uptake of the oxygen of the blood and hence again at the PO2 levels of 30 ml of the fetus which is able to do fine. Is that clear? So fetus is always at the stage of hypoxia and the blood. So you often get this double force effect in uh, this uh, as a short notes okay so remember that now thereafter we have the placental hormone what are the, the one now we have talked about the mechanism of exchange uh, uh, this we have already discussed for the carbon dioxide and the oxygen okay we have also discussed that the waste products will be also uh, exchanged by the same process of diffusion again a gradient has to be there so definitely the fetal blood is in for the have more waste products so that is uh, again, due to the difference in the gradient, there will be exchange through the diffusion and uh, the nutrients, again from the maternal blood will be exchanged through, through the fetus. 
cases on the basis of the diffusion, uh, uh, on the basis of the gradient related and hence by the process of diffusion. Okay. Now you see what are the hormones which are released by the placenta and which favors the uh, entire progression of this fetus and the its development. So we have, I have placed the four major hormones which, we, which are important and we will be discussing, focusing mainly. Otherwise, if you see, you have again a list of the hormones and the peptides which are being released from the placenta. So again, this list is developed in your books. You have an entire list. We will be discussing only the major parts with just giving you a glance at the rest one. Let's first discuss about the major hormones that is the estrogen, progesterone, that is the human choreotic uh, gonadotropin, that is the SCG, and the human choreotic somatotropin, that is the CS. So let us understand about the estrogen first. So for that, again, you have to understand that the estrogen, which is produced at the level of the placenta. Now, placental, this anatomy you have studied. So, uh, what is happening at the level of the placenta? The fetus and the placenta and the mother. Okay, three things are there. That is the maternal blood, the placenta, and the fetus. He will say that man is continuously up. Sorry, please go. And I have been, I have been able to see you from that time. You are not interested. No, Okay, so now we are talking about the three things, the maternal blood, the placenta and the fetal blood. So when we consider this, this is actually a unit, it is considered it is actually a fetal placental unit. This is, uh, and this is the schematic representation, again a flowchart diagram of the uh, stages which is uh, happening or occurring and is leading to the development of the hormones inside this fetal placental unit. This is acting together, hence a unit has been named. Okay. So now if you see carefully how this starts is that if you see that uh, the formation of the estrogens, now this DHEF is the dehydroethyandrosterium uh, synion uh, sulfate which is released by the fetal adrenal glands. Okay. Again to say this these steps are available in your book. Okay, well, this flow chart is not from your book, but these steps are definitely available in your book. Uh, you can go through them. If you want to copy them down, you can copy them. If you want to take a click, click you can take it. I don't mind. Okay. So now what is there is that is DHS, which is being formed from the fetal adrenal gland, that is moving from the fetal blood to the placenta. Now, once it enters into the placenta, there is going to the enzyme sulfatase, which is going to take out the sulfate component from it, and only the DHA will be left back. And within the placenta, then it will be converted into the androstenedione. And from androstenedione further, it will be the aromatase enzyme that, under that uh, influence of the aromatase, uh, it will be converted into these different forms of the estrogen, that is the estrone. Estriol and estriol. Okay. Now estriol is the first so that is the E3. That is the estrogen which is found more in the fetal blood. It is not found uh, much in the maternal blood, but it also goes. The estrone and the estradiol is mainly going to the maternal blood this side. And uh, as if you remember in the last class, I have already discussed that is the estradiol, which is mainly the more active component for the adulthood. Okay, so you can see, so this uh, formation of the estrogens is taking place, estriol is going back towards the fetal end. Is that clear? Is that okay? So, what does this estrogen is going to do now? It is actually going to maintain the vascularity, increasing the vascularity of the uterus. It also, in, in fact, it, uh, uh, it may increase the uterine contractions also. But you see that progesterone is keeping it at a check. Okay, so uterine contractility is mainly required at the end part where the 
So it's actually yes. Okay. So this this hormone is quite important. It's playing an important role in the initial half. And this is the hormone, as I told you, it is detected one of the earliest detected hormone in uh, and that uh, mostly the heart test, which uh, commonly people can take over. This is available over the counter, and uh, if the person can test, the female can test whether she is pregnant or not. It is this is the hormone which is, as I told you, detected earliest. But again, to say there are other things also in case of certain tumors that the beta HCG level might be high. So later on when you study the pathological aspects, you will study that the HCG levels may, may get high in a number of conditions apart from pregnancy. But the most common one is that the person has to test for the pregnancy. This is one of the earliest detected hormones. <laughs> then you have the next hormone being released by the placenta is the the HCS or the HPL, what you say that is the human placental lactogen, also known as earlier. The previous name was also the human chorionic somatomammotropin. And this hormone is actually uh, lactogenic and it is promoting it for, it is preparing the female for the further, uh, I mean, for the further lactation processes. And Hence, it is promoting the development of the mammary glands in the female during the uh, process of the uh, pregnancy, for the pregnancy. And uh, it is important that it is maintaining the maternal glucose levels. Basically, it reduces the insulin sensitivity and it prevents the, uh, reduces the uptake of glucose. A little bit reduces it. There is a reduction in the uptake of the glucose so that more glucose remains available in the maternal glands for the fetus to take uptake while uh, while there is a diffusion taking place at the level of placenta. So this is helping in that. Uh, and of course it also maintains, regulates the protein and the fat level also so that these are also always available to the fetus. I have already discussed these and if you see the this again is this graph from your garden where it, meant, it is just telling the different hormones at different stages of the gestation. If you see over here, the initial part, but as I told you, the HCG being the quite the earliest hormone to be detected. So this has started from the, the weeks of the pregnancy has been mentioned, and uh, the levels of the HCG, here the progesterone as well as the estrogen, they're all being plotted over here. So if you can see this red graph, this is showing the uh, HCG levels, and you can see the initial half the progesterone peaked up, and well detected and it is in fact maintained also throughout the pregnancy but uh, of course not at the same level as that of the initial half. Uh, the estrogen and progesterone they slowly take over and as we have already discussed placenta takes over initial half is always to the, uh, the progesterone is by the corpus luteum later on the placenta takes over and then it maintains it throughout the pregnancy. So these are the different hormonal levels. Uh, just in brief about the other hormones which we are talking about, although I will uh, repeat in the next class also, but I have mo mostly discussed the four major hormones which are uh, important for you to know. The other hormones which are also released out of this, like relaxant, although uh, not much is reported, but it is said that it is helping in causing the relaxation of the ligaments uh, and the muscles. Let's see any problem with Okay. So, uh, as a result, so this is going to help in the further uh, process of the childbirth. Okay. So, uh, next maybe I will take the next class and that will be supposed to be the last class of the system. And then on Thursday, you will have an integrated lecture uh, from the Department of Public Planning. And uh, we will take over and then start our system of the system later. Okay. Uh, can you please go ahead with the attendance?